Well, today we've been blessed by Eric Ten Hag's comment on Mason Winwood. Remember they told us that after the season, United will come up with a, cl a conclusive decision on where, on the whereabouts of Mason Winwood. Whether he's going to start Manchester United, are they terminating the contract? Are they learning away? <clears throat> are they learning him away to a side like Juventus, a similar that are so much attracted to him? we will be knowing the future after the season has ended. Now today, United are really holding the awards of the year, of the players, and Eric Ten Hag has happened to speak to a Times journalist known as Henry Winter, and it looks like the entire story is going to, the entire video is going to be about Eric Ten Hag because it's going to hate to hint about Mason Green's future at Manchester United, then <clears throat> uh, Harry Maguire's future, you know, he has gone ahead and really given us a reason as to why he's benching him, then something concerning um, how he felt when Brentford beat us four goals to nil and how he reacted. He has gone ahead and really revealed that to the journalist. And lastly, we are going to go a little bit to male sport and bring you a story of David De Gea's contract that looks like is ready and soon it's going to be announced. So, Rock and David is my name. Smash like button, comment and share. If I told you you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now, let's go to the Eric Ten Hag moment as Henry Winter, <clears throat> a chief football reporter, or foot, sorry, football chief football writer for the Times, has, come, has said, <clears throat> not said, this chief this chief football writer came up and obviously held an interview with Eric Ten Hag, and Ten Hag said the following on Mason Greenwood that Greenwood showed in the past that he's capable of doing scoring front roll, scoring 36 times in 130 appearances but emphasis is but emphasizes it is not his decision as who whether he returns now obviously ten hag has shown us that when you read that statement very well and you analyze it it's a confirmation that eric ten hag is an admirer <coughs> of mason greenwood that's it because if he even knows his numbers that in 36 in 130 games greenwood scored 36 times that shows you that even when he was at Ajax, he was really <clears throat> following up what was happening at Old Trafford as Mason Greenwood was tearing, was tearing the seasons down. And he never, never, never stopped scoring until he found himself in a, in a position of getting, getting suspended because of the cases that he was acquitted of in the February of this year. So, Mason Greenwood is really a very good striker and that statement shows you that Ten Hag is really obsessed with this player. But, he says, all emphasizes, that decision <clears throat> to get him back at the club is not his, meaning that the decision is going to be made by the hierarchy of the club. And, uh, we are really anxiously waiting for this decision to be made. If there is anything, the fans of United are really waiting for Apart from the transfers, it's Mason Greenwood, Mason Greenwood statement because the public court is divided. There is, <clears throat> there is a portion of fans who believe Greenwood shouldn't be really given a chance to return to Manchester United, and there is a portion of fans who believe he deserves a second chance. Right? So the public court is divided, and you look at the board of United and really pity them a little bit. That where are they going to stand? That is it. You know, 22 years of age. That is Mason Greenwood. And he's just 21. He's making 22 years of age in October. So, he has a lot left in his tank. Will United extend his contract, loan him to <clears throat> Juventus or AC Milan, play a season there, get back to where he was, then they sell him some huge amount of money? Because if you really loan Mason Greenwood somewhere and he fires in close to 30 goals a season because he has that capability, in his maiden season at Manchester United, he scored 17 goals. That was 2019 2020. He scored 17 goals. That is Mason Greenwood for you. So he has gone ahead to show to us that he's really a very good player and he's versatile. He can play as a right attack midfielder where Anthony plays. He can lead the line. He can also play as a left attacking midfielder. He's more than even a generational talent. I've seen people call him a generational talent, but in my own understanding, I believe he's more than generational talent. He's just way above the ordinary. That is Mason Greenwood for you. But let's assess the options of if at all Greenwood returns to Manchester United. 
how does it affect the club of Manchester United? I'm talking about the pitch. On the pitch <clears throat> effects. One, will you go in and sign a centre forward? <laughs> That's the big question. That's the big question. When you look at Mason Greenwood, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer played him as a right forward. But in his entire in his entire growth career from all the hierarchies of Manchester United under 8, under 10, under 13, under 15, under 18, under 20, under 21, he played as a center forward and he scored very very many goals in his <coughs> young career. When he came in through here, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer introduced him to the squad and played him as a right forward. But with the scarcity of centre forwards and the minimum budget we have, can United really benchmark onto that and say, alright, we are going to get Mason Greenwood back because of the lack of money? If he returns, I think he can outplay any centre forward at Manchester United. Even if you bring Harry Kane, this boy is talented. When you look at his shooting abilities, his skill set, you know, the way he positioned himself, the composure, you know, he's too composed on that ball and he's really clinical. I believe he can even beat Anton Martial. You know me, I'm an admirer of Anton Martial. I love Anton Martial and on very many occasions, I've put my hand there for him. You understand? But coming out here and saying that Mason Greenwood will be benched by Anton Martial is like banging your head on a brick wall. <laughs> That's it. So, he's a very talented player that at any point you'll understand exactly that when he comes in at Manchester United, he will take over. Even if you bring Harry Kane, Greenwood can bench Harry Kane. Why? He's more talented than all of those players. Young, age is on his side. He has a lot to learn. And he's one of those players that I believe have not yet benefited in the, in the presidency of Eric Ten Hag. If Ten Hag can really put his hands onto you, Mason Greenwood, Greenwood will turn into a monster of a striker. He'll be the best striker in the world. Look at the world. He was 17 years and at the level at which he was really scoring in goals in the season of 2019-2020, it was really out of this world. It was ridiculous. I don't know whether you're getting my point, but my point is simple that I'm talking about the effects of him returning on the pitch if you needed to give him a chance to train with under Eric Ten Hag. Ten Hag would have gone ahead to groom <coughs> a mass destruction striker with instincts to kill with no mercy in front of goals of the opponent. This boy is really one of the kind. But let's wait and see how that is going to pan out. But Ten Hag has gone ahead and really showed us that for him, he's interested in the return of Greenwood, but he's not responsible for allowing him to come back at Manchester United. Then, Henry Winter went ahead to ask Eric Ten Hag on how he felt after the Brentford game. He said, I hated myself after Brentford. I'm responsible. I hate managers. When they are winning, they say, I won the game. And when they are losing, they say, the players lost the game. No, we win together. We lose together. That game was one of those games that most pundits said Ten Hag is going to be sacked on his third game at Manchester United. Do you know why they're saying that? The third game, we are hosting Liverpool at Old Trafford. So, for me, I'm not all about what Ten Hag, is going to, what Ten Hag has said that he hated himself. You understand in such a situation, everyone will feel like he's hating himself. But what has gone straight into my memory lane is when managers are winning they say we won when they are losing the players lost the game ten hugs new say is we win together we lose together remember we had the say that had gonna hate really come into our videos especially concerning eric ten hag ten hag has always said that good is not good enough that's one of the things that Ten Hag is going to have to emphasize season in, season in, match in, match out. That good is not good enough and keeps asking more from his players. Now, he has a new quote or a new line out. We win together, we lose together. And that's why these players of Manchester United are really so much 
open with the manager they tell they tell him exactly what they feel about him and they'll never at any one point feel like they are betrayed every time they go in the field of play they feel like they are playing for the manager and that's something that had been out of Manchester United ever since Alex Ferguson left in 2013. David Moyes faced that he failed to really put his dressing room in order the same applies to Luis Van Gaal the same applies to Jose Mourinho, the same applies to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Rafragnik, who was there as the interim. Those are five managers. All of them had failed to do this. And some of these managers had been at the club for two, three years. But Ten Hag is just, just like a month away, two months away from clicking a year ever since he started managing Manchester United or managing the players of Manchester United, but see what he's going to have to solve. A problem that has been here for years, Ten Hag is going to have to solve it in a space of just, I think, two months. He solved it in a space of two months. That's why he thought that the likes of Ronaldo felt like we don't belong here because of the traits that Eric Ten Hag was pushing in for at the club of Manchester United. Now, Ten Hag was also asked about Harry Maguire. This is what he had to say. No one would be happy with this situation. He works very hard, but Veran is fantastic. And then they asked him, will Maguire stay? He said, let's say I'm happy. He's here. He's for his job. He's here for his job, but it's also a decision. It's also a decision he has to make. Ten Hag added. Now, Ten Hag has confirmed the reason as to why he doesn't pick Harry Maguire. And he picks... Rafael Veran ahead of him. We've always said that Rafael Veran is better than Harry Maguire. That's a known. It's something that doesn't even need defense. But he has also answered another question of as to why he picks Victor Lindelof ahead of Harry Maguire and Harry Maguire has been on the bench. That means even Lindelof is fantastic. <laughs> That's it. So, the next line he threw in, that it's also a decision he has to make. Meaning that, Ten Hag is going to have to approach Harry Maguire and tell him that you are not good enough to start ahead of Luke Shaw, Veran, Lisandro Martinez, and Lindelof. Now, if you're okay with you being here, with me going in to bring in Kim Inge, you can stay. If at all you're not okay with it, the exit door is open for you. So it looks like Ten Hag has gone ahead to open the exit door for Harry Maguire. And he has assured him that you aren't going to go ahead of these players. And I'm getting in another central, central, central defender whom you aren't going to beat. Because Kim In Jae is playing at levels of coming in here and obviously battle it out with Rafael Veran. So that is the plan of Eric Ten Hag and has gone ahead to reveal to it to the media today to that reporter of the Times. Meaning that Harry Maguire's time is over at Manchester United. Ten Hag has confirmed to us that it's up to him whether to leave or to stay. But there is no more room for him to play at Manchester United. And lastly, the male sport has come out and told us that a new contract has been agreed by David De Gea, but, it's still to, but it is still to be signed off by Manchester United's hierarchy. Now, I told you last time that the media is always reactionary. How are they reactionary? Because, because David De Gea came out yesterday and saved a penalty and did some good saves and he never did any error all haula <coughs> on the field of play. That's why they are doing this. They are putting out stories like this. But remember, when he made a mistake against West Ham, the entire following week, you saw what happened. They were slating him. They issued loads of nonsensicals about his future at Manchester United. And yesterday, they now confirmed us that he wants David De Gea to stay. David De Gea also wants to stay. And the club is wanting to stay. The club also wants him to stay. That's it. So, I think the deal is going to be signed very soon because David De Gea wants to start the club. There is no way a manager like Eric Ten Hag can go out and really lose out a goalkeeper like David De Gea is going to have to keep 17 clean sheets. You know? He's improving on his ball distribution. 
and that will be another long journey for Everton Hag to work next season with a new goalkeeper. Why? Being a goalkeeper for Manchester United is another task altogether. You know, it's an all-time job. That's it. Because we saw even when David Eha came in through in 20, was it 2011? 2011, right. You saw his the first season at Old Trafford. He was really struggling. But when he settled in, he has been here for like 12 years, ever since he came in through at Manchester United. So guys, your reactions to Ten Hag on Greenwood's future, looking like for him, he wants him to stay, but it's not in his hands. Then, your thoughts about Harry Maguire, Ten Hag really opening the exit door for Harry Maguire. And lastly, what do you think about... What is the guy? The guy is David De Gea's new contract that has been that is going to have to be agreed and it's waiting the board to really approve it. So guys, thank you very much for watching through smash the like button, comment and share. I sign out for now. See you later and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bye bye for now. See you later.